Um, as a purebred born teacher, um, I want to, uh, let's do a quick exercise before we move on. So if you could just stand for me for a second. Now I want you to extend your right arm. Yeah, it is this one here, the right one. So bend your elbow. Now pat yourself on the back and say, well done, I made it to Madrid. <laughs> <laughs> so, Thank you very much, you may be seated. I want to talk to you about something. I'm a practitioner. I'm not a full-time researcher at, at the university, so uh, you need to understand my perspective that I'm going to bring today. Uh, I, I've developed uh, education systems worldwide. I've developed quite a few education systems in the Middle East. And I'm, at the moment, working for an organization, a digital university, um, where some of you are also involved in. And uh, I'm responsible for the professional development of 25,000 teachers. And um, I've developed my own little systems on how to do that over the years. But today I want to talk to you about the senior school leaders. And uh, this is in the Middle East, it's in a particular country where I actually did my research. Um, it is a repetitive research, I need to say that before we start. This is not something new, I've done this in a couple of countries. And I adapted and adopted uh, my research uh, questions and methodology slightly from a search that was done in 2013 by some colleagues. So, so that's me. Let's quickly have a look. <clears throat> I want you to have a look at these two statements as an introduction. And it says, research suggests that school leaders need ongoing professional development. We all talk about teacher development, all about teachers, 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 which is really great. We we'll talk about the leaders in the schools. 2013. Then, in 2016, I made that statement, all right? I said, however, the leaders typically don't require further professional development of the appointment because of their formal qualifications and their extensive yeah. experience. So little Johnny becomes a teacher, head of department, vice principal, and a principal, and there's no further development, no further support. You were shaking your head so you know what I'm talking about, mm -hmm. isn't it? Yes. Right. So, now, at the end of this discussion, let's talk about that, that whole process that's happening in schools at the moment. Right, so now that we know the issues, can you agree with me on the issues, where to from here? Let's go to have a look. So my research question here was, what are the perceived, this is about perceptions of these people, they complete a questionnaire, I'll tell you more about that now. What are the perceived development needs and the competencies of newly appointed senior school leaders and do they feel supported after their appointment? Can you see there's three things that I try to tackle here. Very complex um, perceptions by people um, on what they're actually doing um, in their roles. Um, so let's quickly have a look. I had 135, it's actually ongoing. Um, the questionnaire is still out there, people are still completing the questionnaire. So, um, I believe it's 100, when I wrote this, it was 135. It's now around about 140 uh, people that have uh, answered the questionnaire. Now, what, what is such a big deal about that is it is a 20 page questionnaire. Okay, it's not a single page. So, 135 people um, that's got the time or that could take the time to actually complete this questionnaire for me, I think that's quite significant. Now, you can think of the volume of data that I got in from this. So for the purpose of this presentation today, I narrowed it down into a very small bit of that, that questionnaire. And I'm gonna to talk to you about that because I believe this is fairly significant. Now, when we talk about school leaders, I'm talking about middle leaders, I'm talking about vice principals, and I'm talking about principals. If you look at this slide there, um, Vice principals, 55 vice principals in the schools, 50, uh, 35 principals, head of departments, those are your curriculum managers, and aspiring new leaders, um, 15. I believe aspiring new leaders should be 
categorized, and that's why I've got it included here. Right now, when we look at and when we look at senior leaders in the schools, they have very specific functions. Vice principals and mid leaders perform specific functions in the school. I'm not going to tell you where this now. It may be a, a question that I will pose later on, so that you can understand. Leadership functions and managerial functions. Vice principals and principals and head of department. Head of department manage the manager of the curriculum in the school. What do they do? What is in the managerial function? Um, in some countries, we, we refer to that as um, organizational functions, right? or operational functions, whichever you know, country you come from, terminology is different. Right, so I looked at these five pillars. I call them my five pillars. Um, I, I look at leading the organization, leading teaching and learning, leading the community, leading strategically, and leading people. Those are the five main functions of a senior school leader. Everything they, they do uh, can actually fit and then you need one of those headings. Now it's quite interesting. Out of those five, now remember these are people <laughs> that are already in the position. Right? They've got years of experience. So when I go back, one of the slides, what is significant about this slide? You can tell me, what do you see here besides these beautiful people? What is significant here in this slide? What do you see here? Gender. <laughs> good yeah, guess, I good guess, that's not the answer. <laughs> now, look at that, 15 different curricula. Oh, yeah. This is a small place, very small place. Okay. We've got 125 schools in this particular area. 15 different curricula. Can you imagine the, the, the yes. situation? No, um, no. Right, so let's quickly have a look now. People from right from um, from India, Pakistan, there are school principals, right up to the other side of the world, American school principals, British school principals, South African, you name it, wherever there's a country, we've got a principal or a vice principal in one of the schools managing all the different curricula. So can you imagine how we are juggling to Make sure that all the standards are in the correct place. How do we want to be sure what's going on? It, it is a, it is, it's a huge issue. So I, um, my role is to develop these people. Um, so I, I talk to you about a specific issue, and you've got no understanding of what I'm talking about because that's not how you were, how you grew up. Of, you know, um, <coughs> your system where you come from, that's not the way things are done. All right. Okay. So I want you to. As a school principal, let, let's, let's refer to this, these people as school principals. As a school principal, we, we assume and we expect people to know certain things or be competent in specific areas. Now look at these five areas, and you can answer this for me if you want to. Which of these five areas do you think school principals really should be competent in? If you pay 85,000 US dollars for a year for your child school fees, you would expect that your school principal will at least have two of these things and you'll be extremely competent in those two. Which ones will it be? Anybody that will help me there? I would say yeah, the organization. Dr. Marcus, I know you would say anything <laughs> people. <laughs> That's him. Uh, it's very important. Absolutely. It is, it is extremely important. I agree with you 100%. Uh, and we've had many discussions about these kind of things. But which are the two? Leading the organization. Leading the organization? Okay, let me show you. Okay. Right, those are the two. Those are the two areas. Leading strategic and leading teaching and learning. That's what the school principal is supposed to do. You must make sure teaching and learning is pro happening properly in the school, whichever way you use, whichever focus, whichever curriculum, American curriculum, specific focus, British curriculum, specific focus, uh, Filipino curriculum, specific focus, CBSC curriculum, Indian curriculum, very specific focus, etc., etc. But you can narrow it down to those two areas. 
So a school principal needs to know how to lead strategically and he needs to know how to lead teaching and learning in the school. And if one of those two areas are lacking, you can imagine what's going to happen in the school. All right? Now, I'm very sad to announce to you that all over the world where I've conducted my research, these are the two areas where people show that they need a lot of help, or the most help. They indicate in every place where I've done this research, these are the two areas where they actually need more help. So my questionnaire was designed in such a way that on the one side I will test the competency, I will ask them about which areas they are competent, and then later on I change this whole questionnaire into which areas do you need help, okay? And you, it's interesting that they say the same things that they say they are very competent in, they also say they need a lot of help. Now there are various reasons can be, um, and um, I've had a debate with some of my colleagues about this. Why? Why is it that people can say it can be for two main reasons? They can either say that they need development in a specific area because that's an area of interest for them, so now they want to know more. And then the other people are the people that really don't know about that specific area, and therefore they will say that they need help in that area. Okay. Um, as I said before, it's a 20 pages themed questionnaire. Right, so what was the research method questionnaire? Applied at five point like it scale. So the data analysis here was very descriptive. Um, I just uh, you know analyzed it from what I could see there. Um, there were some places where there were some open-ended questions where they could clarify for me uh, what they meant or what they didn't understand. Um, as I said before, 135 people, school leaders, senior school leaders, these are people with at least, most of them, a 20 years experience in education, some of them, because you need a specific level of education to be appointed as a, a school leader, senior school leader in this particular place where I did the research. And a minimum qualification of a master's degree in most cases. The structured questionnaire survey sought to ascertain the perceptions of both leaders is development <coughs> needs. They have said to me, I need to be developed in this area. And their perceived role competencies. Okay? While we're also making sure that, uh, you know, testing their confidence levels um, in the areas of under investigation. Right, so those were the three main findings. The overall preliminary findings indicate that all respondents require professional development after appointment. In all those areas, that are tested, those five areas. Now, there are many sub um, areas. I will show you some of them now. In every one of those, 20 pages full of things they said that they need with development. So, to me, that's quite shocking. We sent our children to people that don't know what to do, or they don't know how to do it. And in 2013, people have said at that time already, this, we cannot continue with the way that we continue the development of senior school leaders. And everybody said, yes, we need to change. But nothing has changed. We still continue the same way. Very few systems in the world really focus on developing senior school leaders. Um, the second point, specifically two areas, as I said, the need um, for development, and then I said the respondents indicate the same development need for areas, and I've just discussed that. Right, so just very quickly, very simple analysis here, so you can just get the picture. Um, this is for leading strategically, and those are the four sub-areas under leading strategically. Designing an effective school improvement plan. Just have a look at this highlighted blue. 66% of all those leaders that are getting paid to run a school strategically are saying they cannot do a school improvement plan. The second one is collecting and analyzing data for my strategic plan. Now we know that you cannot run school without being able to analyze data. 
look at this. More than 60% of the people said, and I, I used from a three onwards, because I believe anybody that rated the three sort of in the middle, they, they were either there for a specific reason, and I actually included them as people that need a, a specific need. But can you see that all these areas are over 60%? Change, change management in the school. The next one, turning strategic goals into action. My goodness. <laughs> can you believe this? Same, over 60%. Now, the sad thing and the quite amazing thing to me is this. These people, most of them, cannot lead teaching and learning in the, in the school. And I'm making this bold statement because before I've joined this digital university, um, I was very involved full-time in one of the largest schools uh, in this particular Middle Eastern country. And the principal of this particular school had no idea on how to manage this. 3,500 students in the school, very, very large school, from kindergarten right up to A-levels, and he had no idea how to actually manage this. Okay. Let's go to have a look at the sub-areas here for leading teaching and learning. Have a greater understanding of current approaches and effective teaching and learning. Look, that end. Using a valid and reliable assessment practices. Look at that. More than 60%. They don't, uh, they don't understand it. Creating a learning culture of positive staff attendance. No. Managing classroom instruction. Look at that. <coughs> that is, that, that's a concern for me. All right. Now, so the results of this, besides the fact that I can say Yes, once again, I'm disappointed to see the results, but the results are exactly the same, exactly the same as all the other previous studies. Western countries with lots of money in the professional development for their teachers, other countries where there's less money for professional development for teachers, rich countries, not so rich countries, Data looks exactly the same. If I put the graphs next to one another, normally I would show the, those in bar graphs, and you can, if I put them next to one another, they look exactly the same. So, what am I saying here? I'm saying to you that somewhere we need to change the way we train our leaders in the schools so that they can be effective managers in the school. Now, I have my own little theory and that is my, on how to do that. And um, I think some of you have heard that before. Uh, uh, this is my pilot training method. And um, I want to, to actually make sure that we can train our leaders in the schools the way they train airplane pilots. How many of you will get on an airplane and when the captain says, I'm captain so and so and so, I have watched a hundred videos on how to fly this plane. I've been to lectures for four years on how to fly this plane. And I go for professional development and they put me around in little circles. Um, and then they talk to me about differentiation and all sorts of wonderful things. And they know how, how this plane operates. Rest assured, sit back, relax, enjoy your flight. How many of you will stay on that plane? No. <laughs> Not me. I have a comment. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I'm just wondering because they express that they require development, and yes. I think that's a good sign. Yeah. Yeah. Because uh, if they didn't feel that they need improvement, yeah. then they would not be lifelong learners. Because, yeah. you know, there's this uh, readiness to change scale, and a person who uh, has metacognition yeah. and reflection to be able to detect yeah. where she needs uh, development, I think. We are not dealing, I, I would kind of put it differently, that they are ready for change Absolutely. and that we need to help them uh, to do that. And, and in Finland it's so that the principals 
uh, they have empowered themselves by hand. We have this sure fire, which is uh, in Finnish and Swedish, Suomen rector, Finska rektura. So they have a network of principles and peer learning, and also they use distributed uh, leadership of schools. So the idea is that they find their needs together and they organize the association for principles organized events where they learn together. And for instance, some, once they invited me there because they wanted to know more about digitalization and blah, 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 and, and things. So, so I think that I might a bit kind I, of... Um, I think that um, what I wanted to say, we're still going to get to that. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I, I was thinking um, they're running out of time, so I was... <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm going to pinch a couple of minutes here oh, sorry, as well. Yeah. So, yeah. now I've got uh, more yeah. time now. <laughs> yeah, I just that sentence yeah, that absolutely. they yeah. expressed that they would want yeah. more development. Yeah. Because I wouldn't, I wouldn't say based on those results that they need, they yeah. just express, express the yeah. need, and it's a good sign. Yeah. No, it is, it is. Um, and obviously we, we do have in every system where I've been, we have the people that, that say, no, 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 don't come to me, I know it all. And then when, when those schools get external reviews and inspections, they're normally the, the lowest rating schools. So that, that is true. Now, just to, to answer what you said, what my role, my current role, is I, I'm the director of learning communities, uh, learning community programs at this institution. And um, my role is to do exactly what, what you're saying there, and I am doing exactly that. And I've done that in some other parts of the world as well, where I got the principal to start working together. That's all another presentation. Um, and uh, the successes of that and things that are going on. But it's as if the whole world is not seeing what you and me are seeing about how it should be done. But the people are all expressing, yeah, they need development. But people don't know how to do that. Um, they don't know where to start. They don't know what is, what is required. So thank you for that. Um, right, so it can be con concluded that the previous professional development practice have left a large gap in the leadership development practices and therefore new appropriate contextualized practices must be supported and operationally relevant. The limitations and yeah. <laughs> All right, teacher's question was a self-report. Um, do we know that that is 100% correct? Uh, I believe that if 99.5% of people say to you that we need development in a specific area, then we should take note of that and we should actually act on that. Um, in this part of the Middle East, so instructions were only in English. I do have an Arabic questionnaire, but most of these people answered the English questionnaire. They, they did not want to use the Arabic version. Um, just for some reason, they, they all wanted the English. Now, for those of you that, that know, Arabic and English translations are very complex. Uh, you know, it is very difficult to uh, plan, translate from the one to the other, it's, it's, especially when it comes to various terminologies, it's not very easy. So there's always a little bit of uh, understanding that's lost in translation when we do these kind of things. Okay. Right, some references there um, that, are, that I've used and so forth. So any questions, anything from anybody? Yes, ma'am, there's a big yes. question. From Finland, shortly. Uh, you're, you're writing, I don't challenge you with the, that the uh, principals and headmasters need more education, but uh, somewhere you wrote that, uh, that, um, the, that he, he or she would be responsible for teaching and learning yeah. at a school. Yeah. Well, upon my um, experience, in Finnish schools, I would say that the teachers are responsible for that. And, and uh, other than making the schedule, it's outside of the headmaster's responsibilities. Yeah. No, I so, so I never, personally, I never felt any kind of control 
from the principal's side. I, I, I'm sure yeah. he or she never knew what I was doing at the classroom. I can understand the perspective. If yeah. you're seeing this, remember these people are yes. in a monitoring function. Yes, yes, okay, so I understand. They are leading teaching and learning in the school, mm. so they have must make sure that teaching yeah. and learning is done appropriately in the school. Yeah, I understand. So, so yeah. they're not directly but indirectly responsible for the teaching and learning. Yes, this is pretty much uh, yeah. depending on the context where. where Absolutely. Yeah. This is from this research, yeah. not in your country. A different, a di a little it, it will be very different from country uh, no. to country. Thank you. Sorry. 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 Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Thanks. Sorry. I was not